In the final installment of our Futures Watch series, I'm joined by Oshawa Generals forward, Brett Harrison. Brett, really, really appreciate your time. How are you doing these days? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm doing really good. Yeah, thanks for uh, having me on. Yeah, no, thank, thank you so much. Um, there's a, definitely a lot to talk about with you. Uh, of course, you just won a gold medal with Team Canada at the U18s in Texas. I'm sure you're still kind of reeling from the excitement around that. So congratulations. Maybe you can kind of talk about what that experience was like. Yes, it was, uh, it was an unbelievable experience in Dallas. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a great group of guys. And it's just, uh, it's just a surreal feeling, just uh, bringing home the gold medal. And uh, just with the group of guys, we have created uh, lifelong uh, friendships. And uh, yeah, it's uh, one of the best teams I've ever played on. I can imagine. Now, was there anyone on that team? I'm sure there were more, more than one player, but anyone on the team that you maybe don't really like facing off against as much during the regular season that you were really looking forward to getting to play with on the international stage? Yeah. Um, well, Mason McTavish, he's, uh, he's our, he's our rival with Oshawa against Peterborough. So, uh, yeah, just, uh, obviously those are good battles with those games, but no, he's, a uh, He's a great guy, good good player on the ice and a great guy off the ice. So, yeah, I, I enjoyed playing with him. Awesome. Well, congratulations again. It was definitely a very exciting tournament to watch. Um, now, you also spent some time playing in Finland earlier this year. Kind of a little taste of life overseas in their junior ranks. And I think you also got to play in one professional game as well. How was that experience? Yeah, it was, a, it was an unbelievable experience. Um, I went over there with... Uh, Nicholas Canadi on Mississauga and uh, yeah we just uh, we were living there uh, just the two of us in an apartment so uh, he was doing most of the cooking and I was doing most of the cleaning so uh, it's definitely a little bit different from uh, from back home so yeah it was uh, it was a really great experience with him and uh, yeah it's uh, something I'll never forget. Awesome nice that you guys kind of got to enjoy that experience together and, and help each other out in that sense. All right, well, we'll dial things back a bit. You, of course, had a strong rookie season with 21 goals, which is the most by a general's 15 or 16-year-old rookie since John Tavares and his 45 goals over the 2005-2006 season. You might be getting a little sick of everyone just, like, bringing up that stat, but it is a pretty impressive stat. I'm just wondering what that means to you, given that JT is such a beloved player in the Gens community. Yes, it's uh, it's obviously uh, an unbelievable uh, accomplishment for me, and uh, yeah, I'm uh, really proud of that. And just yeah, just I have to thank my coaching staff for uh, giving me the opportunity uh, that they gave me last year, and obviously uh, the teammates that were around me just uh, just helped me uh, succeed. So yeah, I had a really great time in Oshawa last year, and uh, hopefully uh, continue forward. Fantastic. I mean, the Gens emerged pretty strong in the middle of what was a strong East division back in the 2019, 2020 season. Maybe you can just sum up how much fun that, uh, that first OHL season was for you. Yeah. Just, uh, just uh, making the jump from uh, minor midget to the OHL was, uh, was definitely a big, big jump, just uh, the size and the speed of everyone. But yeah, just, uh, just, I just got brought in really well. Like the, the vets on the team, the captains, assistant captains, they're just, so kind to me and just uh made me feel like one of them so yeah it was a it was a smooth transition and uh yeah I couldn't couldn't say any bad things about Oshawa it was uh, just an enjoyable year well that's definitely a nice kind of lead into my next question I'm just thinking about all the strong well the strong veteran presence you had on that team guys like Brett Newman Kyle McLean of course Phil Tomasino who uh who jumped in midway so who could you really credit with helping I guess to show you the ropes during your rookie season yeah I think uh I think our captain Kyle McLean he uh he really helped me and uh he was just a really good guy I could always uh talk to him about anything and same with uh Cole Resnick as well he was a he was an older guy in no way as well and uh yeah they were just uh always there for me just to, to talk whenever talk about hockey or just talk about life so uh I think those two guys uh really helped make the transition smooth Perfect. And is there anything you've been maybe trying to work on for next season? Something you kind of want to improve to elevate your game? 
Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm always just, I'm always working on all aspects of my game and uh, definitely to uh, get more explosive and uh, my first three steps for uh, my skating to get a, uh, to be faster and also to, um, to get my uh, shot accuracy and to my shot harder. So uh, I can keep uh, continue scoring goals at the, at the next level. Awesome. Well, Oshawa is a club known for developing you know, an impressive lineup of high-end talent over the years. Now, with a year of play under your belt and, and two years within the organization, what has impressed you most? Yeah, I think uh, I think just how much the coaching staff uh, just puts together really good practice plans, and they, they want us to get better. They're always there for us. We're doing video with them. We can stay on after practice and work with them. So, uh, yeah, they have, we, have all the, we have all the tools to uh, – to make yourself a better player there with the facilities we have they're they're unbelievable so uh yeah just uh just everyone everyone's there to make a good working environment and uh yeah i think it's just uh everyone's just has a lot of fun at the rink and uh just uh, always uh, always working hard fantastic well maybe you can speak to what communication has been like with the team uh, over the past year and with this kind of up and down year that we've had um, have you guys been participating in regular zoom calls I'm sure you guys have a few group chats going some uh, specific workout plans yes um, yeah during during the year we're always hopeful for the for an OHL season to happen so uh, yeah we're doing uh, zoom calls regularly just to just to catch up with everyone see what they're doing and also to uh, we were just going over systems and some watching some video on some NHL games just to just to prepare for the upcoming season. If it was uh, we we thought it was going to happen, but unfortunately it didn't. But yeah, we we're uh, we we're in contact regularly and always. Uh, my coaches are always checking in with me. So when I was in Finland and went out the U eighteens as well. So yeah, it's been uh, it's been really good uh, connecting with them and uh, hopefully uh, can see them soon. Awesome. That's great. Uh, well, looking ahead to the NHL draft, I think we're at the point where we can say it's, it's fast approaching. Uh, how are you feeling about it? Is it something you're, you're really starting to think about? Yeah, for sure. It's always, uh, it's always in the back of your mind, uh, since, uh, there's going to be, uh, no more hockey go going on until, until the draft. So, um, yeah, it's definitely something that I'm thinking about, but no, I'm still continuing to, uh, train here in London and uh, hopefully get back on the ice soon. But no, I'm just still uh, continuing to work out and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I guess you kind of just answered my question, but because there's no hockey between now and then, what does what does the preparation look like for uh, for the draft? Yeah, I just think uh, I just have to uh, stay in the gym and uh, keep developing. And uh, since there's no ice right now, just uh, always getting outside, going for runs, keep my conditioning up. But uh, once I get back on the ice, I'm just going to try and get on the ice as much as I can to uh, keep developing for, uh, for next season. Perfect. And I mean, of course, we touched on your stint in Finland, your gold medal win with Hockey Canada. Aside from those pretty remarkable feats, what are the biggest steps you've been taking to, to, to get ready for, for next season? Yeah, I just think... Uh, I've been in contact with uh, all my teammates and just uh, just keeping up with them. I haven't seen a bunch of them in a while, so uh, yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be really nice to see them. But uh, yeah, I've always I've I've been watching uh, a lot of the NHL playoffs. They're uh, they're really good to watch, and there've been some really exciting games. So yeah, I'm just trying to watch a lot of video and see what the the guys at the top level are doing, so I can uh, translate that into my game as well. Fantastic. Uh, Brett Harrison of the Oshawa Generals continuing to join me now in the final Futures Watch episode. Of course, fans have had the opportunity to, to see you play, but I figured we'd kind of give them more of an opportunity to get to know you a little deeper. So uh, with that in mind, uh, can you, in your own words, uh, describe yourself as a player? Yeah, I think I'm a, I think I'm a two-way player and someone that can play in uh, all areas of the zone and uh, can play in any situation as well, whether it's power play penalty kill five on five so uh yeah and i also think i'm i'm a really good shooter and uh, i have a really good uh sh shooting accuracy so uh when i get the puck in scoring areas uh you can put the puck in the net is there an nhl player that you kind of look up to or maybe someone that you model your game after yeah i like to uh model my game after jonathan taves on the chicago blackhawks he's just uh 
just an all around great player. And, uh, he's a, he's a winner and he loves winning and, uh, I'm a really competitive guy and, uh, yeah, I love to win as well. Awesome. Well, looking back a couple of years now on your minor midget season with the London junior Knights, um, well, you, you led the Alliance U16 loop with 42 goals and 63 points before being chosen uh, in the first round by the Oshawa Generals in 2019. What stands out, thinking back to those days, what stands out as a favorite minor hockey memory? Yeah, I just think uh, just those uh, minor hockey tournaments, just uh, being in a hotel with, uh, with all your buddies and uh, just playing either mini sticks in the hall or manhunt around the hotel. It's just... Uh, it's just a really fun moment that uh, you can't really do now. It's just, uh, there's no tournaments, but no, it's, uh, that's definitely one of my favorite memories, just uh, being with all my buddies uh, in a hotel. Awesome. And, and, and maybe is there a favorite minor hockey coach that you kind of credit to helping mold you into the player you are today? Yeah, I think, uh, I think just my, my dad at a young age, he was, uh, he was, he was just my coach and my mentor when I was, uh, when I was younger and uh, I always look up to him and he's always there for me for advice and also uh, a spring hockey coach, uh, Dave Demetrio. He's uh, he's, he just, he just coached me for when I played for the Toronto Bulldogs and I still keep in touch with him to this day. So uh, yeah, I think uh, those two guys uh, really helped me. Awesome. Well, I'm going to ask you the same question uh, this time about your rookie season in Oshawa. What stands out as a favorite memory from that year? Yeah, I think uh, I think my first uh, my first OHL goal in my first OHL game was uh, was a pretty big memory. I was really nervous before the game and uh, just didn't really know what to expect. And to to get the first one under my belt pretty early was uh, was an unbelievable feeling. And uh, all my family uh, came down to Kingston to watch the game, so for them to be there as well was uh, was really awesome. Definitely, and I mean it definitely set the tone for what was the. Uh a really strong season for you. So uh, yeah, it must've been nice to just get that out of the way and kind of pro probably settled the nerves in a bit, right? Yes, exactly. Awesome. Well, what have you enjoyed most about uh, living in the city of Oshawa? Yeah, just the, just the support we have from our fans as we, we almost fill, fill, our, uh, fill our rank every night. So uh, yeah, you just feel the support from everyone and uh, just, yeah, before, before the games, just, just like all the sign, uh, signing autographs and after the game signing autographs. So it's, it's really cool. And also it's just a, it's just a great city. That's just, everyone's so kind to you and uh, just, uh, yeah, I love everything about Oshawa. Awesome. Love hearing that. Um, all right. Next question. Do you have a fun kind of locker room nickname? And if you do, can you tell us what the story is behind it? Yeah. So uh, most of the guys call me Harry and uh, just, just that's from my, from my last name, uh, Harrison. And uh, also some of the guys at the U18 uh, Team Canada were calling me Bretsky. So uh, I'm not too sure why. It's like Stillman. Stillman always calls me that. So uh, yeah, that's his nickname for me. I like it. Pretty self-explanatory, but I like it. Yeah. All right. Do you have a go-to pre-game meal before, before a game? <laughs> pre-game, before a game. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just uh, just the traditional uh, chicken and pasta, which most guys. And uh, I also uh, I really like mushrooms. I, I think I need to have uh, some mushrooms in my pasta. So, uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's definitely my go to. Awesome. Definitely also a big mushrooms fan. Um, what about a pregame ritual? Um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm pretty superstitious. I like to. Uh, I like to do uh, mostly the same thing, same, same warm up routine, same stretching routine. And uh, I usually just uh, put, put my equipment on for my right side. So right shin pad first, then my left and my right elbow pad first, then my left. So yeah, I think, uh, I think that's just uh, a pretty uh, standard one. Yeah, it's de definitely pretty standard, but glad that's definitely been working for you. Uh, all right. What about uh, go to locker room music? I don't know as a rookie, if rookies are generally the ones who make the choices in the locker room, but uh, I'm curious if you have like some specific <laughs> tunes you like to listen to, or just a specific genre of music that gets you going before a game. No. Yeah, for sure. I didn't have a, uh, I didn't have the ox in the room for my rookie year, but um, just coming into the, coming into the rink. Uh, I do, 
I do wear headphones and uh, no, I like to switch it up a lot. So sometimes I'll go with rap, sometimes I'll go with pop and even uh, sometimes if I'm feeling some country, I'll uh, put that on. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty easy with the music and uh, yeah, anything goes for me. Awesome. Nice and easy. Um, which OHL arena have you enjoyed playing in most on the road? Uh, definitely London, just, uh, just hometown, just watching, just had season tickets there for 10, 10 years. So just being there and playing in front of the 9,000 fans. So it was, it was really cool. And also, uh, in Kitchener was, uh, was a pretty cool, it's a big crowd. They're loud. And, uh, it was just, uh, yeah, it was a cool moment for me. Awesome. Well, growing up, uh, growing up just, uh, outside of London, I think Dorchester, that's where you're from. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, you, you mentioned you were a season ticket holder for, for so many years and London, of course, has this rich winning history. So I'm sure you've been able to go to a lot of like really monumental games and see a lot of monumental players. Is there a game or a series or a player that just sticks out in your mind that you, that you feel really fortunate to have been able to watch? Yeah, I think, uh, Bo Horvat that he used to, used to play for the London Knights, um, yeah, I was at I was at one game when it it was in it was in the playoffs and he scored with like zero point one second left in the third period. So uh, I was at that game, which was uh, which is pretty exciting. And also uh, he trains in the same gym as me uh, in the summer as well. So uh, and I got to uh, go on the ice with him this summer as well. So that was pretty cool. Awesome. That's definitely to have. Definitely nice to have someone like that uh, to spend some time with. Um, all right, I have one more question for you uh number 44 is there any significance behind that number yes there is um when i was so when i was living in dorchester and had season tickets with the knights um we were we also billeted uh rob shrimp who uh who was wearing number 44 so i think that just uh that just stuck with me and uh, i still keep in touch with him to this day so yeah i think that's uh that's the reason why Awesome. I feel like maybe I should have made that connection, but Rob's definitely a great guy and still a very good friend of the OHL. So nice guy to have in your corner, right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, Brett, I really, really appreciate your time. I hope you're keeping well. And I just want to thank you for joining me for the final installment of Futures Watch. Yes. Thank you very much for uh, having me on. This has been Brett Harrison of the Oshawa Generals and a prospect for the upcoming 2021 NHL draft. I just want to thank all of you for tuning in with us over the past few months. We've really appreciated it.